Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno. We are at the London Film and Comic Con 2011, where the stars of film and stage get to meet the fans and us. So we're at the Film and Comic Con. What does that mean to you, to, to be a part of, um, of this sort of occasion and, and be able to connect to the fans? Uh, well, for me, it's great. Like, with the new Harry Potter coming out now, it's great to get all the fans here. We can meet up, we can sign autographs, have fun, have a laugh, get some pictures taken. Just... Let them have a good experience, you know? Yeah, and it's always nice to, you know, get a chance to see your fans. Because um, at the end of the day, it's them who make our day. So, um, you know, it's, it's good to have that exchange of, you know, experience and see what they thought about the films and, you know, especially having the premiere, you know, just, just gone. So. Well, how did you both get involved with Harry Potter in the first place? Was it the ca a normal casting process? Uh, well, originally, what I believe is, uh, Spielberg was meant to do the movie and there was an all-American cast and then that was scrapped and then Chris came along and he wanted an all-English cast so they'd cast another guy, an English guy as Seamus and then they decided no we need an Irish guy so they came over to Ireland and they took like three or four people over and I was one of them and got the part, I was delighted you know I was there with uh, Matthew Lewis and Daniel so it was class yeah, um, I didn't go to any castings. I was picked out of school and told I was going to play Victor Crumb. So, um, literally, I'm not joking. Uh, I had a car, um, you know, sent to my school and uh, I was taken up to the studios and I met Mike and he asked me to scream and do, you know, various things. And then, um, you know, a week later I was, you know, phoned back to say, would you like to play Victor Crumb? And I was like, yeah, why not? I had no idea what was what I was getting into. <laughs> How has it affected your lives? How has it changed being part of such a, a huge franchise? Oh, it's fantastic. Like we get to tour the con uh, tour the world, like say France, uh, Australia, Japan, everything like that. So we've been able to see some pretty amazing things, meet some great people, and just have fun, you know. And also say I love horses, and I started acting so I could pay for my horses. And Harry Potter has allowed me to say buy my own stud farm and buy an awful lot of young horses in and so it's been very good for me in that aspect. Is it, uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same for me, apart from the horses. <laughs> 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 it's actually interesting that you should say that. I mean as a young actor as young actors, um, is it you have to be mindful, do you, that not to get carried away with the fame and the money that could potentially come, you know, to stay grounded and, and to invest sort of wisely in oh, your yeah. future. Yeah, not only that, I mean, I, I recently noticed that whatever I, you know, put up on my Facebook profile becomes news. So anything we say, you know, anything we wear, the way we act out, you know, the way we talk to people, you know, everything is important. Well, you know, before all, all that fame, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't care what I was saying, you know, I could do whatever I like, get drunk, you know, do various things we, we don't really do now. That's it. Like, the horses keep me grounded, like, because so they got to be back home skipping their stables out and, you know, doing the dog's work. So, uh, I can't get very big-headed doing anything like that. And none of the girls will let me get big-headed anyway, so. I've said this a lot, but it's... When you do live theatre, I come from music originally, and then live theatre, and, and in that context, you, you have a shared experience. You have a shared organic experience with an audience. And the trouble is we're doing television. I mean, film, you can even go to the movie theatre and share it with the audience there in some ways. But in television, I don't come around to your house and watch it with you. It depends, but usually I don't. But uh, so I always look at this as a chance to sort of complete that, that circle with, with the audience. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a fantastic thing. And uh, sci-fi audiences especially, being as, as smart as they are and as bright as they are and as... as all knowing and all seeing as they are, it's, it's an interesting challenge to to. Well, I think you, what you get as well with with the, with, um, the fans here as well. Are, are they they're extremely loyal, aren't they? Unless you mess up or, <laughs> or destroy their characters. I mean, you only need one or two Jar Jar Binks in the on, in the universe, and that's the end of it. You know, I mean, well, Ron Moore got death threats when he made Starbuck a girl. I mean, it, it, obviously loyal goes a long way, but. You know, don't, don't dare ever change anything for a sci-fi audience. Doctor Who's the same thing. 
I've never heard so much slagging in my entire life of Matt Smith. And he's brilliant. He's absolutely fantastic. It'll take a while and then it'll be, oh, yeah, 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 he's the best. But um, we don't like change because it was always a guilty pleasure. Sci-fi was always a, a guilty pleasure. Sci-fi and fantasy and, and those kind of stories were always, you know, the hidden stories. They're the best stories now. I mean, I've been recently uh, in the movie theatre a few times recently. I've been very, very disappointed with what I saw. I thought Thor was really good. Yeah, it was actually. I Green really Hornet was it. atrocious. Yeah, and I love Martin. I think he's brilliant. A great director. But I've, I found that TV is actually probably more interesting. Je Jeffrey, Ricky D, yes. welcome to the UK and at the London Film and Comic Con. So, um, what is it like being able to connect to your fans? Jeffrey, you first. Oh, I, what, I, what I, an occasion. Oh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel connected <laughs> now. <laughs> I, this is a, a real treat uh, because, uh, you know, we, we aren't necessarily in it for the money, are we, Ricky? Absolutely <laughs> not. Sorry. It's, it's, uh, it's mainly... Acting all comic cons. <laughs> we, we, we hope that, because the competition in, in uh, the, the film industry is so amazingly large, uh, yeah. And, and the, uh, the state of the business of it, uh, you have name actors working for scale now. It's, it's the hope to, do, to tell great stories and right. to enlighten and entertain. And if that pays off, then they show up and ask for interviews. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's right. I think, I think basically it's nice to get back to the, the organicness of acting and, and what it means, and not so much that it's some money, giant money machine. You know, the fans can actually come now and, like he said, we're getting paid what we should, and, and it's, I think he's right. Is it, like you know, it's a very personal process. You know, acting is all about connecting That's with great. people, and yeah. and and your audience is, is no different, is it? Because without an audience. That's, Why are we doing that's, it? That's right. That's like you said. How do I feel about coming here? It, it's great to, to come see the bands and have them come to actually get to meet them and, and be with them and talk with them and see their excitement, which is why we do it. You know, which is great. And they are the reason that we that we do things like this. Because without the fans, without people watching the films, what do we have? We have pretty films and nobody watches them. That would be horrible. Wouldn't it? And both of you have been in the film industry for such a long time yeah, yeah. as well. How has the industry changed for, for, for you? I'm going to let you go with that one. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, well, I, uh, since I first came to Hollywood as an item, I actually started doing films like uh, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band and FM and, and The Rose, mainly as uh, an extra or in big group shots. And, and then finally, was discovered and came back as a, an item since I was testing for the lead in War Games for Martin Brest and then uh, uh, landed a small part in the Twilight Zone movie and then worked with Clint Eastwood on Pale Rider and then during those days uh, there were, uh, how do I say, a, a, sort of a smaller model going on. The, yeah, you could get general interviews with casting directors, right. thing of the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you could uh, not have such a terrible time getting a, a, a co-star shared title card billing. Uh, the politics and, uh, and the power sort of shifted from uh, uh, boutique agents who had some power to uh, these mega agencies uh, where these power agents get the big stars and package the deals with, with directors and writers and, and producers and cinematographers now. And yeah, it's turned into a producer's fest really is what it is. And, and it's not so much about uh, you know, I, I mean, just look at what's going on in TV. You can turn the TV on it and see mega stars doing guest star roles on Medium, on, on all the shows that are on TV. And that, I think that's what's made the change for everybody. And it's kind of like the economy. It's kind of like everything. Every, 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 you, you now have your super rich and the middle class has kind of shrunk into nothing. And, and that's kind of how it went with the acting. The same thing. And now you have the big stars that are also hungry who aren't getting the work that's not out there so i think the biggest change is is definitely that it's and the also the stories and the stories the stories has been amazing to see the dreck that is uh, often produced with huge money right. and and huge casts attached uh that get uh, great distribution and people uh you know say oh the special effects are great but where's the story Right. You know, and and, right. and that's that's terrible because the the story and and uh, 
that that's the bottom line. What what moves you in well, that? And, and it's also great because it's like what you guys are doing with the, with with the new technology, the internet, and everything that's going on. I mean, you couldn't have done this Not ten exactly. years ago. And now, exactly. and now we all have an avenue where we could do our own films. You can really. If you're talented, get your stuff out there and do it on your own, which is which is a curse and, and, and a good thing at the same time. Yeah. Well, hello and welcome to the London Film and Comic Con. Welcome to the UK as well. I know we've probably seen you here a number of times, but what's it like being back? I always love coming back. Uh, I really love, I love, really love this city, and, and uh, it's the only major city in Europe you can go to where you can speak your native language. <laughs> you know, for one thing. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I love I love being here. The fans are so awesome, and uh, you know it's great that they come out and have a good time, and it's fun to see. Yeah. I was going to say that the relationship really between um, an actor and the fans. I mean, is is that important to you when you're taking on roles? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, they are the fans. They come to see the, the films and. They're very supportive, and it's it's great to know that you do something that they really uh, appreciate and remember. I think you know, like well, with, the, with especially with the, um, like Back to the Future, it just resonates in people's hearts, isn't it? What what yeah. do you feel that it is about the film that people just stuck with? Because generations love it. I know we're uh, we're all we're both still like amazed that it's so loved now. Yeah. Uh, well, I, uh, the time travel is a, is a winner. I mean, people love to imagine what it'd be like to go to different times, and uh, the relationship between um, Doc and Marty, a mentor and a, and a young man who's eager to learn and see the world and through, you know. And then the thing you brought up earlier, it's a real family uh, story. I think also with the idea that that you know that if you change one thing in your life, you could change everything, and you could change your parents, and you could make, go from being sad and depressed and and a, a failure to being like a huge success and have love in your life. You know, just by 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 you know stepping up to the plate at one moment, you could change everything. I think that was a really cool theme. Too. The other thing as well for you as actors, both of the parts that you've played must have been so much fun and, and, and so much that you could do with it and, and make into and make your own as well. I, I love the whole, that whole romantic idea of a mad scientist who fumbles around and then one day comes up with E equals MC squared or something, you know, it's just, that's kind of magical. My character was the best character ever. I mean, really, oh, no, I mean, nice. how lucky am I? To have that character, uh, you know, I still think she was the best, and no one's ever given me a part that good again. Interesting play on the relationships. <laughs> Being in love with your son is pretty awesome. Strange. Uh, but how do you, like, how do you get into the mindset of that, though? You know, if you're one minute his mother, and the next, how do you sort of disconnect? I just for you know forgot. I mean, I had I had it was a hard part to play because I had to be completely madly you know, crazy in love with my own son. So I just forgot that he was my son and just thought of Michael Fox, who was so adorable, it's easy to fall in love with. <laughs> and and how do you, you know, when you take on parts, do you ever have any inclination that they're going to be as big as they are? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, Back to the Future is massive. I didn't think it was going to be that big. I remember, uh, who was the guy who wrote the music? Alan Silvestri. The, the band singer. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, the theme. No, 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 no. Chuck yeah. Berry. Uh, Huey Lewis. Now that's oh, uh, oh, oh, Huey Lewis. Huey, Huey Lewis. Lewis. Woohoo! Finally, uh, three tries. <laughs> before the film came out, uh, we went, uh, I don't know if you were there or not, but we went somewhere north California oh, yeah. to, to make the M, the M, the musical video. Uh -huh. And. Uh, Huey Lewis had his band there. We were up all night, but he was doing a gig. You know, they asked him to do this, so he's doing it. And I remember he came over to us. We were sitting, me and whoever, and he kind of looked at, came over like very skeptical. He said, I don't, "Is this is this film going to do anything?" And he said it very innocently. He didn't know, and so 
I guess we all kind of felt that way to some degree. Well, the fun still continues here at the London Film and Comic Con 2011, but we have to get back to the editing suite. I'm Claire Bueno, and you're watching Premier Scene.